Hello everyone, the Skilled Roy here, back with another Legends of Runeterra video. Well, another week has passed since the Zeri custom cards, and so now I have a new custom set for you guys, this time of set, The Boss. As always though, thank you so much to the designer of this set for submitting, it's an absolutely incredible set. This set was designed by Arima Tornuji, uh, absolutely incredible stuff, I've seen some of their work before, so I'm really excited to get into these cards and see what they did with set. Right off the bat, we're starting with Pit Grit, the two mana burst speed spell in Noxus, given ally plus two plus one this round if it has struck this round grant it instead really interesting design here so we're already starting to see the formation of what the set sort of uh, mechanic is going to be which is striking a second time or getting benefits after striking an initial time this is obviously sort of in reference to his double strike passive in league of legends now this is actually pretty interesting so obviously the initial comparison here is going to be to sharp sight sharp sight is of course the two mana uh give plus two plus two and be able to block elusives in demacia uh, and this is roughly equivalent to that so initially my thoughts immediately for this card is going to two cards in particular, uh, Transfusion, as well as uh, Sharpened Resolve, I believe it's called. Uh, so these are two other buff spells within Noxus that actually give some uh, health to the unit. And if you think about it too, uh, Transfusion gives roughly approximately the same amount of health, because Transfusion does give two health, but it also costs one to cast, therefore making it roughly equivalent to Pit Grit in many ways. So the real question here is Pit Grit fair in this hypothetical world. And I think comparatively to Demacia having Sharp Sight, Sharp Sight's almost, almost always better in this situation. The, the ability to grant the stats is really great and I think that's really cool. But the thing about it, the time you wanna be using these sort of effects is in response to your opponent's removal spell or in response to your opponent's like counteraction. Like, hey, they frostbite you and then you wanna cast a buff spell in response. Hey, they are gonna buff their own unit to try to kill you. Well, boom, you can play Pit Grit instead, right? They try to cast Mystic Shot, boom, you can Transfusion and get some more health and survive it, right? Those are the situations where you would really want to be using this. And in those situations, those are almost always exclusively before combat or on turns that you don't even have combat at all. So the uh, the bonus that you're getting here is actually a little bit harder than it might seem because just paying two mana for plus two plus one permanent stats is... It's fine. I mean, look, look at look at cards like Brothers Bond, for example. It's a two mana give two things plus two attack permanently. And that can has no restriction whatsoever besides having two units, obviously. So because of that, I can't help but think to myself that this card is actually, despite looking a little splashy, probably completely fine. I think overall, I really like the concept. I think the, the, the condition is actually quite a bit harder than it might come across on first read. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this card. I'm going to give it a solid four in design. And in terms of execution, I'm going to give it a four in execution as well. This is a really solid start to the sort of set we've seen thus far. And I'm really excited to see how this goes. So we have Bloodied Bruiser, the three mana two three with strike, create a fleeting pit grit in hand. So obviously we know that pit grit is a fairly powerful card already just from what we just, re just reviewed it. But is this, is it strong enough to warrant running a three mana two three uh, and that's, and you don't even get them permanently, they're only fleeting, so that's a bit more of a question. Now, let's talk about some cards that this is similar to. Obviously the number one off the top of my head is River Shaper, the three mana two two that is able to draw you consistent spells from your deck. Now, generally speaking, I wanna say that Pit Grit will be on average weaker than the average spell in your deck um, because you can choose which spells go into your deck, of course. So generally speaking, River Shaper ends up getting spells that you really care about, right? And I'm not too sure if Pit Grit is something that, that is that much more comparable. Not to mention River Shaper keeps the cards in your hand and Bloody Bruiser asks you to cast Pit Grit right away. So is getting a permanent plus two plus one as good as getting a permanent card in hand? And I'm not so sure, because the thing is, the one really powerful thing about River Shaper is that you don't have to cast a spell that turn, so if you don't have the mana, you're totally fine. Whereas Bloody Bruiser, you need to have the two mana up, and spending consistently two mana to get plus two plus one is honestly not that good. You're gonna to wanna to put the pit grit onto a much more better for better target, because obviously putting it onto Bloody Bruiser feels like a losing feels like a losing bet there. So the real question here is how much more powerful 
could this card be? Because I'm under the impression right now, just from a first read at this, unless I'm missing something, I don't think it's that powerful. Whereas Pit Grid is pretty good because it's sort of inex uh, it's very unexpected on your opponent's side. They can't really play around it 100% of the time. There's other things for them to be worried about. With Bloody Bruiser, you're almost exclusively using it for its, its post effect because you're not getting it before combat. If you got this before combat somehow, it's actually pretty good because in those situations, you'd be able to sort of threaten the plus two, plus one at any given time. And since you've already struck, you will always have the permanent damage buff. Whereas with Bloody Bruiser, it's after combat, you have to then devote the two mana, which means you're losing more tempo, hypothetically. And it, it's, it's more of a contentious sort of debate at that point, I think. So overall, I think this card is well designed. I just think it's perhaps maybe, maybe a little weak. Could you see a world where this becomes a 3-3? Three, three? I, I feel like the designer made it a little weak on purpose because they were a little concerned about the infinite pit grits. So maybe that is fine. Hmm. That is an interesting debate. It is an interesting debate to say the least. I think overall, I'm going to give Bloodied Bruiser a three out of five for design, a really solid, cool concept there, and uh, I'll give it a four for execution. Overall, a really solid design across the board. I think I'm just concerned with the strength of the card relatively to, to actually being able to have it in your deck consistently. Three mana two three is pretty subpar, considering that the equivalent competition in Noxus is like a four three overwhelm, and getting a pit grit every turn is nice, but it's like, you have to be spending mana for it every turn, and I can't see a deck that wants to be aggressive wanting to consistently invest pit grits onto its already existing board state, especially one that's running at 2-3. It feels like in this weird position where it's between both being an aggro card and a mid-range card, and I'm not sure it has a home in either of them. Overall, not a bad design. I think I'd have to see more of this set though. All right, next up we have Seasoned Contender. This is a four mana 4-2 four, with Quick Attack, and Strike Grant the weakest other ally Quick attack and plus one, plus O. Oh. This is a very, very interesting card. So obviously, first off right off the bat, having a strike effect on a quick attack card is pretty good because typically those cards have high attack totals and are able to get through damage really easily. In this case, we're clearly seeing that as it has a four attack power on turn four, which allows it to really contest a majority of cards you're gonna be running into on that turn. Not to mention, you'll also be buffing another card that's already on your board state and doing pretty well with it and giving them a permanent bonus to their attack and giving them quick attack. These are some substantially powerful tools and especially so because you can trade on the opponent's attacking turn. Let's say they play a four drop you really want to trade with, they attack into, you block with your season contender, and you're still getting value by giving your weakest unit on the board plus one, uh, plus one attack and quick attack. So overall, across the board, a really solid, powerful card. Now, of course, the big weakness for season contender is that Mystic Shot exists or Darkness exists, right? These are cards that can answer this card both from a mana perspective of putting the opponent down on mana because they can spend a lot less mana than it to kill it, but also it won't activate its strike effect then, which means you're losing out on the value that it's trying to generate in the first place. So honestly, this card is powerful, but it does feel like it has consistently strong counterplay. The, the very fact that it has such low health means you can easily respond to it with a variety of things. For example, birds can threaten it really easily in Demacia. You have cards like uh, just general removal spells like Mystic Shot, like I mentioned, that can answer it and have a mana advantage from doing so. Across the board, it is probably fine. It is probably fine. It's just really hesitant to make me think that this is another card with a strike effect that has an ability that could really be scary the more you activate it. Uh, quick attack, it it has sort of become this keyword that a lot of people sort of don't value as often because of how many characters have it. But in certain situations, this attacking first on the far left of your attacking row can make things really disruptive for your opponent. I do really appreciate that the designer specifically put other allies. So if he's your only ally, you don't get to keep stacking attack on him for free, you do have to have another ally, and I do really like that. I will say though, I'm not sure I like the fact that a contender is increasing the strength of another opponent, sorry, sorry of another person on your team. It doesn't feel very flavorful to me. Maybe I'm missing something there, but overall a really solid design. I'm gonna give this a four out of five for design. Uh, an execution, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant. I'm really hesitant because I feel like this is a little pushed, but I think it's fine. I do think it's fine, and I think I'm going to give it a four for execution. I really do like Season Contender a lot, and I think you can do some really cool stuff with it. I really wanna see where the strike effects sort of go, and in Noxus especially, I wish there were more strike effects to really make use of Season Contender, but I feel like that's what will be coming in the later parts of the set, as well as just in general, like being able to splash into other regions, like Demacia, for example, will give you more striking to your advantage. 
All right, next up we have Remissful Ringleader, the five mana one five with Challenger. When I strike an enemy, the strongest ally other than Remissful Ringleader also strikes it. Now this is probably the ideal target for our uh, season contender. Not only is it a weaker unit with only one attack, but it will also struggle to get into combat because it's going to be striking and then only has one health to activate its effect. Sorry, it only has one attack to activate its effect, which means it's not actually gonna be doing that much damage to begin with. So if you were to give it the plus one and, and quick attack, for example, you'll be able to remove things really easily because the additional strike from your ally will technically also be activating at the same time as quick attack, effectively giving you super quick attack in a way as it'll strike twice during the quick attack window which means the opponent if they have like a barrier or something like that for example won't be able to even stop you from doing that now at the same time though it does have a lot of sort of uh, responses here though right like you have frostbites you have stuns um you have general recalls of course since it is five mana which means this is a pretty substantial investment into the board it's it's questionable though how how likely you are going to be able to spend this little amount of it, sorry, this much mana for such low power. I understand it gets a bonus on the board state and helps you trigger your other strike effects. The real question here is, is it strong enough to consistently activate the other ones where you'd be willing to do so? Another big issue here is on the turn that you play Remissile Ringleader, you're gonna have to do sort of pseudo, com pseudo combos with basically Season Contender in order to ensure that it really gets off well. So for example, you put Season Contender on the far left, you have Remissile Ringleader clear a path for it by dragging its competition away and putting it in front of it, and then the, the, the competitor will hit, deal four damage, give Remissful Ringleader uh, two attack, uh, up, up, sorry, up to two attack, activate its quick attack, quick attack will then strike, then the uh, r the contender will then re-attack again, hitting that same target, dealing six total damage, and then giving Remissful Ringleader another additional attack. You know what, actually, considering this turn four and then turn five, if you're attacking on odds, that's actually not an awful curve, especially since this has Challenger to help clear the way. Maybe I'm underestimating it a lot. Cause I actually, as I say, as I sort of like walk myself through it, I'm like, wow, that actually does some solid damage and it can test the board pretty well. This card is a little deceptive. I think it's, I think in certain situations, it's gonna be really great with Contender, but outside of Contender, I don't see many great ways to really make use of this. So maybe this is a card that only exists in a world where Contender exists. And since Contender is a custom card right now, it's hard to imagine that same world. Um, since it is a set though, I will judge it as a set. Uh, and I think uh, in that respect, I think design wise, it's really cool. It really helps sort of push the additional strike mechanic that the, that the, that the designer here is going for uh, in a really unique way. So I think overall, I will give this a solid uh, four for design, really good stuff there. Um, but as for execution, I feel like there's a better way to do this. It, it really does feel like right now it's only real additional, the target it really wants to hit consistently is Contender, which does make it feel a little awkward if you don't have the Contender in hand. Like if you attack with Remissile Ringleader, you're gonna trade, you're most likely gonna trade down because there's not many sort of additional strike effects that are gonna be really useful for you. And you really need quick attack on, on the Ringleader here to ensure that it doesn't take much damage because again, who are you really targeting with this that you really want to kill? Think about it like this, Remissile Ringleader typically wants to hit a high health target. Why is that? The reason why is because they are clearly trying to use power from their ally to hit that target as well, which means that generally speaking, if it was a low health uh, target, like a one health, two health unit, you'd be just killing it anyways with Ringleader's basic attack right there, right? So it doesn't really get to use its ability then. But the, but the contrary point to that is if you're hitting something large, like let's say a Leviathan, for example, you're not gonna be able to survive with Ringleader, right? Because Ringleader will then die. So the question here is like, how do you make it useful? Well, the obvious answer is Season Contender, as we just saw, is a very strong combo with it, but without a reliable way to get Quick Attack more consistently, I think the only other way is the Drummer in Noxus. It's harder to really see this card existing when you don't happen to have Contender on the board the turn prior. And when you're entire purpose of this card being solid is based around a two health unit surviving for an additional turn and essentially two combat steps, I, I have to say to myself, I don't think it's very good. I wonder if there's something that we can do here to maybe give it a bit stronger amount of utility, even something like quick attack, like it's basically needs to have because otherwise it won't really make sense as a card. So it's, this is I think a bit of a miss for me in terms of execution. I like the design a lot, I'm just not sure that the, the stats and the numbers here really match the, what the costs are going for here. I have to wonder, is there a way to make this cheaper, give it less health and sort of really sort of focus in on that like low health, 
high power strike effects, giving you additional reasons to like really want to invest in those pit grit stat bonuses. So that's kind of how I'm evaluating it right now. Uh, so overall, I think I'm gonna give this a, oh man, do I go that low? No, no, I'm, I'm going to give it a three for execution. It's honestly a really cool card. I just do think that the numbers are a little bit off here because it never feels like it's hitting its ideal target unless you have Contender. And I think that's a little bit too narrow for what I would like in a custom card. All right, next up is Sets Knuckle Down, the four mana slow speed spell. An ally strikes an enemy. If it has already struck this round, it strikes again. And obviously create a set in your deck. That's a part of his champion spell. So what does this, how does this card sort of shake out here? So first things first, in in general, the my sort of outlook on these types of effects uh, of multi-strikes is that generally speaking, they're not really efficient removal spells, not usually. We already have things like double tap that already exist in the game that are fairly easy to activate and are fast and are generally better in most situations. But this card is instead just going to be sort of focused on the one-sided strike element first. Now, one-sided strikes are roughly worth about this sort of mana here. If you think about it, look at cards like, for example, uh, Bloody Business, which is a five plus power uh, conditional one sided fast strike, whereas this is a slow strike instead. Now, I'm not too sure how often the multi strike is going to be relevant. In most situations, it's probably just going to be a four mana slow speed removal spell, in which case it sort of falls to the same pit pitfalls that most slow speed removal is that where you have to be the one to initiate it. And it makes it really hard to uh, sort of put yourself into a situation where a single frostbite, a single recall, uh, or any sort of barrier or defensive buff can really stop you. So the real question here is how easy is it to set up to get that multi-strike and how much are you getting off of that multi-strike? Now we've already seen a couple cards already here that really benefit a lot from striking multiple times. And it's important to know, I know it doesn't seem to make sense, but if you strike something multiple times, even if the first hit kills it, you will still get the other bonuses. But you can test this right now with concerted strike, for example, if the first unit kills something, the second unit strike effects will activate, not its slay effects though, which is fairly strange. So if you look at, for example, the second unit being a fury unit, it won't activate fury but the second time being a strike unit, it will. It's a little strange, but whatever. Well, let's not go too far in depth on that. So in the most ideal situations here with Knuckle Down, you're really gonna be wanting to use this on cards like Contender, for example, which are gonna give you a bunch of uh, attack and quick attack across your board, as well as the uh, bloodied uh, Blade Bruiser originally, which is gonna give you a bunch of pit grits. Those are the obvious initial ones off the top of my head, but the condition though of making it having to strike first means that in most situations, I'm sort of envisioning this card being solid in, you're going to do an open attack into your opponent. They are going to block and resolve effects as as, as needed. And then you're going to uh, have this card in your hand to stop whatever development they do after your open attack. A lot of people save their cards till after combat to be played in order to protect them from potential shenanigans during that combat. Whereas this card can be a really solid way to sort of catch opponents out. Now, I think on its own, Knuckle Down is not very good, at least from my perspective. Even a four mana slow speed removal spell is just not that exciting for me, even if it does have some niche benefits in this sort of archetype. However, as sort of a, as a removal spell that is a part of a champion's kit, because they're going to have it in their hand if you happen to draw two sets, it's a lot more threatening. If you look at cards, for example, like um, Keeper's Judgment, uh, Keeper, sorry, Keeper's Verdict, uh, which is Poppy's champion spell, no one plays that card. But there are situations where you get two poppies and then you happen to have a really good chance to use it. There are these types of cards that are perfectly unviable to main deck, but sometimes in certain matchups, they will have a huge high potential. And I think that's where Knuckle Down is really gonna see its most benefit, is being a card that is great as a champion spell, but not so great as a normal standardized spell. Now, unfortunately, at least in my opinion, that is points off on the design side, because I think a card should be able to stand on its own and not just be just pure champion spell fodder. After all, all champion spells are also collectible spells. And if someone were to open up a Knuckle Down, it does feel a little bad to them at least in my opinion, again, of course. So I think overall, design-wise, it's not a bad idea, and it makes a lot of sense. It's really, really solidly balanced, but from a design perspective, I have to say it's very niche. It doesn't feel great as a, as a, as a single, like, card to have outside of the archetype, as well as it doesn't feel great if you're not getting it off of sets champion spell in general, right? So in my opinion, I'm gonna give this a solid three out of five. Not too bad at all, honestly, but it's just not really what I'm really looking for here. Uh, as for execution, I do think it's a little on the weekend, and I don't think it's great on its own, but it's so, so good when you when you run it with like any sort of champion. So, uh, so as like the champion spell. So like the question here is, is that enough to really bring it high enough? 
Ah, man, I I think I'm gonna have to give it a three in execution, unfortunately. I just don't think it's really solidly balanced as a standalone card, but I do think it's really good as a champion spell card. So that's kind of where I'm feeling on it right now. I don't want to evaluate too much on it though. I'll come back to it and see if I want to change my opinion after I see set. But as of right now, this is sort of how I'm sort of looking at it thus far. All right, and finally he's here, the five mana four or five set with quick attack. Each round, every second strike of mine deals double damage. Level up, I've dealt 20 plus damage. Man, what a cool idea for a card. So, so set basically works pretty simply here. Uh, your main goal is to sort of cast a combative spell pre-combat and then attack in for a billion damage. Now in general, it's actually pretty fast to level them up too. You're gonna be able to level them up pretty easily. 20 plus damage is pretty simple. It's five strikes in total, or in his special case, you can technically get it down to three strikes because of four, eight, four, uh, uh, eight again, overlap technically. Um, but overall, really cool card overall here. It's a pretty simple idea. Basically your goal is gonna be running things like uh, the knuckle down we just saw, single combat, uh, or any sort of free attack ability such as as uh, Cataclysm. Cataclysm is incredible on set. Uh, rallies are just generally good as well. Those are all some pretty solid examples right there, as well as obviously you, you're gonna wanna run some overwhelm effects such as Might uh, to help him get that extra bonus damage through some chump blockers and stuff like that. And once he levels though, each round every second strike still does the double damage that you already know. But then on top of that, when an ally strikes an enemy outside of combat, deal the excess damage to the enemy nexus. This is essentially like the claws spell that we got in that one expansion that gives you uh, the ability to strike with overwhelm essentially outside of combat. Um, it's important to note though that the opponent still has quite a few ways to, co to counterplay that. They can remove set, uh, they can remove the card that's being targeted, they can remove, uh, the, they can counter the spell, they can frostbite, they can barrier, all sorts of fun stuff to keep it alive. Um, and it's also important to note that if the unit dies uh, before the strike happens, the excess damage will not be dealt to the nexus because just like how the clause spells worked, it unfortunately does not activate if the opponent like glimpse beyond their own unit because the strike is denied entirely then. Um, so overall, actually pretty balanced champion. I, I think this is actually really cool. I'm trying to think of the best way to abuse this sort of card. I think the ones that sort of come to mind are really going to be cards like Whirling Death. Things that let you get the open attack, but still let you commit to a one-sided strike during the combat itself. So for example, set with like a Might and a Whirling Death is going to basically absolutely annihilate your opponent because you're going to deal uh, four damage, sorry, seven damage initially on the first strike. You're going to go up to 14 um, on your next strike. 14 strikes the target hitting through to the enemy nexus and then that's going to do enough to level you up and then after for every turn after that any of your uh strike spells are going to absolutely decimate the opponent um <laughs> Uh, presumably they'll do more than a decimate, but you know what I mean. Overall, it's a pretty cool idea. I do think perhaps there's an argument to say that th four power is a little high for a card that's already gonna be doubling its damage on the second strike, especially with re how relatively easy it is to consistently do. When he's at five power, sorry, when he's at four power here, it was, it was a smart choice first of all, because if you gave him access to bloody business, I think this card would be absurdly good. Um, and I think that's pushing it a little bit too much. But even right now with like just things as basic as Whirling Death plus a Might or Whirling Death plus an Elixir of Wrath even, like it's extremely trivial to level up set. Like on turn six, you can do it basically. So like this is a little concerning, I think from my perspective as in terms of overall strength, um, I probably would bring him down just a peg. You are playing in a region that explicitly has access to many, many, many ways to increase attack. Brothers Bond, the pit grit you added, uh, as well as like Elixir of Wrath, Might, so many different ways to increase attack, Sharpened Resolve, everything, man. There's there's a hundred different cards that can increase attack for, uh, for set. And the issue here is that that puts the onus on the opponent to constantly be sacrificing units to set. Because let's be honest here, in most situations, if they don't, they're going to be feeling pressure all the time from a single Whirling Death letting set instantly kill them essentially. And even with those situations, the very fact that you'd be able to easily get access to just very basic uh, power effects that are gonna absolutely like destroy them, like again, like Might, even things like Zenith Blade, for example, anything that gives set overwhelm is gonna make this card incredibly oppressive. And then the fact is after that, he then gets to turn all of his activating spells into finisher spells is extremely, extremely dangerous. And I think that's where I get a little bit concerned about the power level, especially when he's already at four power. Now, you might want to change the level up to compensate for this, of course, but the very fact that he's just flat out at four kind of makes it a little spicy. So I think conceptually, from my standpoint, it's a little too strong. 
But honestly, when I'm when I'm talking very specific numbers like this, it's because I really enjoy the play pattern. And I think the design of the card is really cool. Nothing here to me immediately leaps out as being particularly broken. I also really enjoy that it doesn't like keep duplicating. It's every second strike of, uh, of, of his. So that way you won't just be able to go infinite or do some shenanigans that give you a billion attack and one shot the opponent. Overall, it's really cool. And it's the very fact that it also has to be locked to the single round also means that the set also has to pre-commit typically. They'll have to do something like, for example, like Whirling Death we mentioned is a pretty low committal option, but they still have to commit first. They also have to do things such as like use Knuckle Down pre-combat. They have to use single combat pre-combat. The, the real strengths of the card I feel are gonna come out of the rally and the uh, free attack aspect. So for example, you have the Ruined Reckoner as a really great way to enable set to attack multiple times. For example, you get a big attack going the opponent sacrifices a bunch of their board to stay alive because again you have so much quick attack and then you can then after combat play reckoner get the free attack for eight quick attack damage with set that's pretty terrifying or of course cataclysm the same thing for three mana uh, again like these are some really solid ways that set can easily activate his second strike while still applying dramatic amounts of pressure and, the, and that's kind of why i'm really scared of him having four attack because there's so many trivial ways to make him get that second bonus and just on his own he's very difficult to block so in general, I think moving him down to three power might be ideal here, just because there's so many ways to buff your attack anyways, that like one mistake against set quite literally will kill you instantaneously. So I feel like overall, probably a bit better if we go on the safer end here for attack power. But honestly, the design, really cool. And I really love how, how he sort of brought together the package. You can see a bunch of really great ways why these all these cards sort of care about it. Even giving him attack power, for example, is really great. All in all, I think I'm sort of falling on a solid Four out of five for design. I think there's some really, really great stuff here. Uh, I think in general, I would definitely want to see a couple more strike effects in Noxus to really make this sort of card shine. But I think the concept is incredibly solid and really just fabulous work with set here. Really, really great stuff. Uh, as for execution, again, I'm just so concerned of just basic combos like a Might plus Elixir of Wrath as an instant level up. Um, you got things like, uh, like Whirling Death. You got things like uh, just Knuckle Down in general, all, all these sort of spells can coalesce a lot and just create a situation where he's relatively easy to level up, he has an extremely high threat before leveling up, and then once he does flip over to his leveled form, he's able to basically instant kill the opponent off of a miscalculated like, oh man, they have knuckle down, boom, I'm gonna take 10 damage, right? Like there's certain situations where I feel like Set's level up form is really powerful and the level up condition doesn't really suit that considering how trivial it is to activate. So overall, I'll, I'll say this, I think Set's execution on the balance perspective leaves a lot to be desired the flavor and everything else about it is great but as of right now i think i'm gonna go with only a uh uh, I'm gonna give it a three. I'm gonna give it a three for execution, but that's purely just for numbers because I think that it's just way too easy to break this card in half. Um, but I do like the card a lot and I think it's a really, really great design. Thank you once more for sending this in, Aramat Tornuji. Uh, this is just like a really, really cool set. I think it really sort of encapsulates the one-two strike nature of, of set. It's an interesting direction because most people I see usually go for the reflecting damage angle or the stunning angle or like his grab angle, but going for the double strike angle is a really nice one. And I've seen a couple, but this is probably one of the more cleaner ones that doesn't just immediately just staple double attack onto him and call it a day. Overall, really great design on this, really impressed. Well, and that's it. Thank you so much everyone for watching. If you have your own custom cards or set you want to send in, please check the link in the description below for a form for you to fill out. Uh, fill all the information there, make sure your card's the right size, et cetera. Etc. Etc. Et and then you can send them in to me and you have a chance to be on the next episode of my Roy's custom card review. Uh, otherwise though, if you want, you can also join my Discord or the custom uh, LOR card Discord where we talk a lot more about custom cards and design and all sorts of cool stuff like that. And of course, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff, like and subscribe, you know, all the typical things I gotta tell you to do. <laughs> you know how it is. Otherwise though, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much again for watching. Peace out.